Hello everyone, so the cold weather's starting to bite a little bit over here in the UK. We've had our first little flurries of snow and sleet this week in Bedford, which puts me in the mood for brewing something uh, nice and dark and malty. So what I want to do today is brew up a nice, simple, back to basics Irish dry stout. So this is gonna be a grain to glass video. Let's get on with the brewing and I'll see you at the end with a pint of stout. Okay, so I've decided to go with um, or base my brew on a recipe out of this book. So this is Chris Colby's Homebrew Recipe Bible, not to be confused with the book uh, most people refer to as the Bible, um, certainly on the UK forums, which is the Greg Hughes one, but it's a really good book, got some great recipes in there. And uh, I am going to be brewing the or a recipe that's kind of loosely based on the Pogue Mahone Stout out of this book. Apparently Pogue Mahone is uh, Irish slang for kiss my ass, so that's a nice little bit of trivia for you and um, that's where the band the Pogues got their name from. Apparently they used to be, the full name of the band used to be Pogue Mahone. Um, they changed that but they did release an album called Pogue Mahone apparently, but there you go. So if you want to uh, insult somebody in uh, Irish or I guess that is that Gaelic maybe, um, you can say that, Pogue Mahone. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, I'm probably not. Um, anyway, I digress. So it's a fairly straightforward stout recipe. Um, he describes it in the book as a balanced dry stout in the tradition of Murphy's. Uh, relatively mild roast character, well balanced by just enough hops, which sounds good to me. Um, the one glaring omission out of this recipe in terms of normal dry stouts is there's no flaked barley in it, which you kind of see in uh, pretty much all uh, standard kind of dry stout recipes um, like the kind of Guinness clone recipes and things like that but that's just as well because I haven't got any flake barley anyway so uh, I was happy to find a recipe that didn't include that um, I've slightly altered it um, for my uh, needs so I've put into my version of it 2.4 kilos of pale ale malt um, this is for a 19 litre batch at 75% efficiency uh, so that's 70% pale ale malt 300 grams of Munich malt, uh, that's not in the original recipe but I thought I'd just chuck some of that in uh, for a little bit more body and uh, kind of maltiness in the background there. 300 grams of roasted barley, um, which equates to just under 9%, that's 9% of the Munich and the roasted barley. 180 grams of chocolate malt, I'm using a slightly lighter chocolate malt, so uh, not the full strength one, that is equivalent to about 5%. Uh, of the total grain bill, 80 grams of Cara 75 uh, or 150 EBC crystal malt which is about 2% and then 150 grams of corn sugar or dextrose in at the end which is about 4.5% of the grain bill. So uh, the corn sugar is there just to add that kind of dryness I guess and lighten it a little bit. Um, there's slightly more in the original recipe so I've reduced the amount of sugar a little bit. Um, but otherwise it's pretty similar. Hop wise we've got, uh, I'm using Challenger for bittering, so 25 grams at 60 minutes to give 31 IBUs and then just 10 grams of East Kent Goldings at 5 minutes uh, for another, well basically just one more IBU but a little bit of aroma hops there at the end. Uh, other than that, everything pretty standard so I'm going to be using Nottingham yeast. The recipe in the book states SO4 or um, WLP007, which is a dry English ale. So Nottingham is a you know, pretty dry, uh, fairly clean English ale yeast in the same kind of vein as those, which should be good. I was toying with using USO5 because I've heard a lot of people say that USO5 is quite good for dry stouts as well, but I've got a packet of Nottingham that needs using, so I'm going to use that. Um, mashing at 60 I'm going to do it at 66 degrees and yeah standard one hour mash and one hour boil um, that's it so that's the recipe comes out 1041 um, OG 32 IBUs uh, color of just under 80 EBC and if it hits 
1008 final gravity that should give me about 4.3 percent so a nice sessionable uh, dry stout um, which is what I'm after so let's get on with the brew footage and I'll see you at the end after that for hopefully a tasting of it Right, so there we have it. That is the finished product. And uh, yeah, it's been in the keg for a couple of weeks now, but it's definitely nicely carbonated. Uh, there's a lovely kind of frothy, creamy looking top on that. And um, it could probably do with a little bit more time, but it's perfectly drinkable at the moment. So let's have a little taste and uh, smell of this, see how it's come along. So it's, um, aroma wise, it's got a very kind of creamy, slightly chocolatey, um, slightly sweet aroma to it. Not that much in terms of the kind of roasty sort of coffee notes, but just a, just a little hint of, um, yeah, kind of creamy dark chocolate. There's a little bit of a kind of biscuity thing going on there as well. But yeah, obviously mainly malt um, driven aromas. Let's uh, give it a taste. Um, yeah, so first impressions, pretty light, um, fairly easy drinking. 
uh, as a dry stout should be. So it's only 4.3%. It is basically a, you know, a session beer. There is quite a bit of roasty flavor, but it's, um, it's fairly smooth. So there's not too much in the way of the, um, you know, kind of like harsh roasty notes that you get sometimes with uh, lots of dark malts. Uh, there is a little touch of that um, dark malt kind of bitterness at the end, but it's not in an unpleasant way. Um, it actually kind of makes you want to have another sip. So I'd say overall, pretty happy with that. Um, I think personally, my own preference, I would maybe want to have the a little bit more body to this. So um, as I said, it is a dry stout and it's quite a low ABV, so it's supposed to be fairly light um, in terms of, you know, uh, body and mouthfeel uh, for a session beer. But I think I'd probably like a little bit more body, maybe a touch of sweetness on it, um, which would probably be starting to edge it more towards a, an oatmeal or maybe even a milk stout. But perhaps that's just my preference in terms of stouts. If I was going to go back to this recipe, I think one thing that I might try changing um, is the yeast that I use. So this one had Nottingham yeast, as you've seen, and it's obviously a very clean, um, quite dry uh, finishing yeast. I think maybe I'd just use something that's a little bit more expressive in terms of the malt flavour uh, to try and bring out some more of the, um, the flavours that are in there, because it's got quite a, um, you know, fairly hearty grain bill in terms of what's gone into it uh, I think perhaps the the choice of yeast has maybe suppressed some of that flavor a little bit so I might go for something a little bit more um, with a bit more character maybe uh, so one of the other kind of English ale yeast that's perhaps a little bit more interesting in terms of esters and uh, a bit more malt forward in terms of the flavor profile so yeah definitely a good starting point though and um, quite a nice recipe to experiment from as well so pretty happy with that cheers everybody i'm the dude so that's what you call me you know uh that or uh his dudeness or uh duder or uh you know el duderino